Hey there, folks. So it's time for more LED shenanigans. So if you've come here after watching uh, the video, I may or may not have just published on uh, this one. Yes, we're doing the exact same kit again uh, for reasons that I will explain while we uh, when we get there. Um, but first things first, for starters, uh, this is a RGB LED kit for the Game Boy Color. And the entire purpose of it, get that out of there, is to make your buttons light up cool colors. That's it. it there, there's no real other function. So we're going to take this perfectly working Game Boy Color that I just installed the uh, Funny Playing Backlight Kit into, and uh, we're going to install that. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, tape here because if you uh, saw my video on the backlight kit that I just installed, this screen isn't actually adhered down by anything. Um, I just don't want it to fall out while I'm messing with it. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and start with this Game Boy Color. It does not have to be a Game Boy Color that has a funny playing kit in it. Um, it's just... I don't know, I figure if you're tricking out a Game Boy Color, it's probably one that you already have backlit. And if you're going to install a backlight, I think the way to do it is with the uh, Funny Playing Kit. So, you know, logical conclusion. Anyway, go ahead and pull it apart here. I think it should be obvious um, soldering is required for this. Also, I mentioned this during the backlight video I just did, but if you're installing a backlight also, it makes more sense to install this first because up here we have two solder pads for the start and select buttons, and it's just easier to solder to those than uh, the vias that I showed for the install. And if you have your if you opted to do neither of those things and you have your uh, button controls, oopsie doodle, almost lost a screw, and you have your uh, button controls wired up to the test pads for the buttons themselves, then you will have to undo that work. So, so you still only having one screwdriver. I forgot what it's like. Oh God, I had the right screwdriver in my hand the first time. There we go. So reason the first why it's easier to do this before installing the backlight kit is I can't really disconnect the backlight kit with all the soldering that I have going on. I mean, I can. I can just desolder it, but I don't want to is my point. I'm just going to tape that down just to, just to make sure. I had to tape that down while I was installing it because of how I did the uh, install. But this thing... The install is real simple. We just got to get it lined up and then we have a few pads to solder and that's it. I am going to take a little bit of extra tape here because of course I am. I'm going to get this lined up. I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I'm going to tape it down. And that is it. Now the alignment on this thing is not perfect, especially because I just messed it up. Uh, let's try that again. There we go. The alignment is quite a bit better when you actually align it properly. All right. So now, actually, let me get a little bit more tape. I do actually recommend taping this down at the top and the bottom. And for the bottom, we are going to completely cover one of the solder pads and the buttons. The reason for that is because it's extremely easy to get solder on the buttons and we just, we don't want to do that. So we'll take steps to avoid that. I'm going to start with this pad right here.
easy peasy. That pad right there. We have another pad right there, but I'm going to come back when I can uh, tape that off because I want to be extra special careful. Once you get solder on the gold contacts, it never comes off. It is there permanently, and you will have button-related problems eventually. Solder that one day. Mm, that's not a good joint, is it? There we go. Beauty. Peel that off. Stick that right there. Last one down here. Cool. So let's go over what I just soldered because I totally forgot to do that beforehand and now it's going to be difficult. Um, all right. Oh, I forgot one. One more. One more. Just kidding. We do need to solder this one because is part of how we control the kit. Okay, now we're good. So if you take a look at uh, Retro Game Repair Shop's website, don't care if that's where you bought it or not. Uh, take a look at their website because they have an infographic on all of the solder points. Uh, but we'll just walk through it right now. For the first solder point, we have the start button, or excuse me, the select button. Uh, you don't need to solder this, but if you don't solder it, then your extension pads won't work. And... Um, I mean, if you're using the vias like I am for the backlight kit, it doesn't matter. But if you were using that test pad, you're going to need to solder it because then you need to go up there. Uh, second point, start button right here. Start button does need to be soldered, I believe. I can't remember if it's used for the kit. Oh, no, it's not used for the kit. We use A and B for the kit. No, shoot. We use one start or select. I don't remember which. One of them is important. The other is not. Just solder both. <laughs> Three. It's B button, that's required. Four is the A button, that is also required. Five is the uh, five volt power, that is required. Six is the ground for the five volt power, also required. Uh, this also lets the kit know that the buttons have been pressed. Uh, seven down here does not actually connect to anything. It's literally just there to like hold this thing down so it's not flapping in the breeze. It would be nice if there were solder pads on the edges too, but there's nothing on the Game Boy to solder to. So there's only so much we can do there. Uh, eight is this pad right here labeled D. Do not solder that to the battery terminal. Some of the earlier instructions specifically said to solder it to the battery terminal. If you do that, your Game Boy will not work. Do not solder it to the battery terminal. Just leave it completely disconnected. I don't know what D does. Uh, I asked Funny Playing about it. They mentioned it was something about um, testing the install. Just, we'll call it a debug line. Just leave it. Uh, nine is the battery detect. This is actually not a through hole. This is a surface mount pad right here, just like the start and select. Uh, this will give you a low power warning when your battery is about to die. However, the uh, battery meter itself is calibrated towards lithium ion battery mods. Um, whether that's a sign that Funny Playing is going to be making them or not, I, I don't know. But unless you have a lithium ion battery mod, don't solder it because otherwise, every single time you boot your 
Game Boy off of regular double A's, it will boot in low power mode and you have to disable that by hitting select AB. So don't solder it unless you have lithium ion battery mod. It won't do anything. There's no way to calibrate it that I know of. And then 10 are the start and select pads, which I already have my backlight kit soldered to the vias here, so I'm not going to be using those. But if I had my uh, backlight kit soldered to these pads down here, I would have to relocate them to right there. So I think that should cover it. Let's go ahead and get this reassembled and test it out. Uh, real quick, I do want to test one thing because this was an issue on my old kit. I think it's still an issue on this one, minor one, but an issue nonetheless. If we go into continuity mode, which means my meter beeps whenever my probes touch, we're going to put one probe on the select button and then one probe on the start button up here. You notice those are those have continuity, but select and select does not. We go to start, that connects up to select. So. That being said, it's not an actual problem with the wiring, it's just the labels on these two buttons are swapped. So if you're wiring something up to these two pads, and it does matter, so like for instance my kit here uses select and start, if I wired it up to these two pads, my buttons would be backwards. It's not the end of the world, uh, especially since it's not commonly used with my kit at all. But it is kind of frustrating. It is a little bit annoying. Uh, but it's it's stupid easy to work around as long as you know that it's a problem. And uh, if you're watching my video, now you know. Um, test test yours with a multimeter. I assume it's going to be fixed at some point. And uh, I probably won't have a new video when it's fixed because, you know, it's such a little thing to change. We'll still have the same video. Uh-oh. That's not right at all. What is not seated properly? Oh, there we go. User error. Just kidding. We're good. forget the power switch and the LED window so you may notice I did not do a power usage test and I'm not going to uh, the reason being I do do it for do -do, I do do it for the uh, backlight kits because I think that is pertinent information pretty much everyone playing a Game Boy is going to be installing a backlight kit so it is a useful data point for comparing backlight kits. Uh, LED mods, not so much. There is literally no function that you gain that is not aesthetic. The Game Boy already has a low power warning. You don't need to add a second one. And then the other use this kit has is it makes your buttons glow. It's like RGB on a custom PC. It doesn't give you more FPS. It just makes your PC look more expensive. And I, I mean, hey, if you're into that, there's nothing wrong with it. Just saying, there's no tangible benefit. So if you're installing one of these things, battery life clearly isn't a priority for you. And that's fine. But I'm not going to bother testing it. Also, the listing already says how much power it uses. I don't know how accurate that is, but... I don't know why they would lie about that, so we'll take their word for it. Also, probably depends on the color and the brightness. Hey, there we go. Let's kill the light so you can actually see that, huh? Oh, I should have cleaned my iron first. Let's 
switching things off. Switch off my iron. All right. So there we go. Looks kind of weird through the shell. Um, I don't know what color that is, but it's showing up as red through the shell, which is kind of kind of neat. All right. Let's see. So select A and B. We'll toggle the low power mode, but since that's not connected, there's nothing to toggle. Uh, we can also hold A and B for two seconds to toggle between the modes. So, it seemed like a little bit less than two seconds. So I don't know what we were on, but right now we are on the breathing effect mode. So I'm guessing we were on RGB before. Notice it cycles through colors and it blinks up and down in intensity. You can hold that, and now we should be in RGB mode, which we can uh, hold select, and do we step this way? I think that's how we step. Oh no, maybe we're in white mode. That makes more sense because it's a yellow shell. Okay, hold those again, turns it off. There we go. Hold them again. Now we should be in RGB mode and we can hold select to uh, cycle the colors. Select and then hit A and B. No, do I have to hold? Oh yeah, there we go. We hold and then we can cycle through the colors and then we just release and it'll stay on whatever color we want and It'll preserve those settings after a power cycle. I can't say that this mod and a clear yellow shell is the uh, best use case. Come on, how do we set that? But it does work. Man, it took me It took me a uh, disappointingly long time to figure out the controls of this thing, and I've I've already completely completely lost that knowledge. Oh, there we go. Oh, I had it backwards. Shoot. Well, now I'm going to have to go back and uh, fix this mess, but let me explain. There are two versions of this kit. There is the one that I did the original video on, and then there's the one that I'm doing right now. The hardware is identical. The difference is the software. The software gives us... Uh, the difference between the software, that is... Uh, is the newer version, the one that I'm doing, the one that if you buy a kit, the one that you're, is, good lord, if you buy a kit right now, that this is the one you're probably getting, the newer version, that gives you brightness controls, that's what I was just cycling through, so if I hold select and B, you see my buttons get darker, if I hold select and A, you see my buttons get brighter, the brightness, uh, now we can, Select A and B. Does that get us out of that mode? No. You'll have to forgive me. The instructions I wrote were for this kit, which does not have a brightness adjust. If we do select A and B, it cycles through the colors. Increment, decrement, that sort of thing. Is it start A and B on this one? No, because start's not connected to anything on the kit. Hmm. Now I'm not sure how to cycle the colors. Oh, man. Just a moment. I will be right back. 
All right, I've got it. I had to go through my messages and try and figure this out because the instructions that uh, Funny Playing put out just don't make any sense to me. So, from a power off state to power on, if we hit none of the buttons, but hold select and then either B or A, we can cycle through the colors. Huh? Huh? Now we can hold, we can hit A, B select, and then select B should decrease the brightness, and select A should increase the brightness. Now, select A, B again, we should be back to cycling through the colors. Perhaps. No? I think we're cycling through colors. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Not the best color choice of shell. I could have made this easier on us. I mean, you can still see it in the buttons. There's just so much extra light bleed from the shell that it's hard to actually see the buttons. All right, and then AB select, and that brings us back to brightness. Ta-da! So, that being said, I have no idea how to dismiss the low power warning mode. Um, <laughs> I will have to update my instructions again, but that's that's no problem. I, I remade the instructions. That's why I was saying go to Retro Game Repair Shop. They have, they have my instructions hosted. Um, but there you go. I also, while I was scrolling through my uh, messages, I found out, I found a message regarding that D solder pad that I mentioned earlier, do not solder to anything. That is a charge detect port. So uh, I theorize the way that should work is if you hook that up to a five volt source, the kit will detect that the battery is charging and maybe it'll flash or something. I don't know. Um, we'll have to figure that out more. Um, I guess I'll do a lithium ion battery mod at some point and we'll take yet another look at this kit, see if we can't figure out all the, the features, but there you go. It's pretty neat. I dig it. Um, it's, it's definitely, uh, the instructions could be better. <laughs> But it, it's it's pretty neat. It does exactly what it says it does. It does work. Uh, it just takes a little bit of getting used to. I recommend a no-pack shell. These are the same hardware, the same LEDs. You can see how much better it looks in the opaque shell with the clear buttons compared to the clear shell with the clear buttons. It just works. I did another install, and I'll link this down in the description as well. I did another install with Natalie's LED buttons here, and that works actually really well, surprisingly well. Um, I'd love to plug it in and show it off, but I just don't have, you know what? Yeah, I can boot it up. I've got, set that aside. I got a power supply right here. Boom! Blinded by LEDs. It's not nearly as bright in a shell. Trust me. But it is still pretty darn bright. Does use a little bit more power than these kits, I believe. Uh, but it's not adjustable. You just get the single color. But, hey. It's hella neat. And if that's all you're after, the single color, then, you know, why bother with all the extra bells and whistles that are a pain in the butt to figure out every time you want to use the Jesus thing. That's just my opinion on it. It is pretty neat. I do like it. And uh, I suppose we're at the point in the video where I uh, bid you guys farewell. 
Uh, but before we go, I do want to give a quick shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me this kit and the other one that I did a video on that may or may not get published. Um, it is what it is. There was there was a lot of cursing while I tried to figure out the uh, controls. And believe me, if it looked bad when I tried figuring this out, this one was worse. But now that I've got them both largely figured out, I think we're good. And uh, there we go. Pretty neat. Thanks for watching, guys. Description for links. Catch you next time. Keep on being awesome. So on and so on.